What's up there YouTubers and fellow riders, the kid is back at it again, cooking up another DIY for you on how to install and program your own Power Commander 3. Stay tuned. All right guys, so I recently purchased myself a Power Commander 3 and uh, for, the, for the simple fact that my bike is running uh, a little lean and I need to richen it up a little bit. Um, as you know, putting aftermarket parts and on stuff on bikes is a little more complex than uh, coming down to cars, but um, I do have a um, Yoshimura exhaust and a K&N air filter and with the incorporation of the new motor, I've uh, suddenly encountered a lean condition. Now, if you don't recall uh, what a lean condition is, lean condition is uh, more air plus less fuel uh, equals the uh, equals the lean condition. And so um, the only way to actually richen it up is to purchase a power commander and uh, and fine tune it in this route. Now um, I went on eBay, found this power commander, which is in great shape uh, for about 150 bucks is what I paid uh, to get it here, and it came in three days, which is pretty good. And uh, I kind of wanted to do this tutorial for you guys because uh, there wasn't really anything good on the net or on YouTube, I should say, that I found that uh, actually sh showed and demonstrated the full process of uh, the Power Commander, how to install it, how to, um, how to program it, and uh, make modifications. So, I mean, everybody has bits and pieces and chunks, and I kind of wanted to put all these chunks together for you guys and, and, and give you uh, one one good product to actually review if you ever happen to uh, purchase a Power Commander. So, at any rate, here's the Power Commander 3, and um, this one is actually in really good shape as you can see. Uh, most of the time, when you'll find them on the when you do find them on the internet, and they aren't on eBay or or someone selling it used, you're gonna see that the casing is usually all damaged and whatnot, and uh, either warped or, or or what have you. And that's because the power commander usually sits either uh, they usually put the power commander in the engine bay, or they put it on in the rear trunk, which sits above the. Uh, exhaust pipe and uh, well actually most of the heat transfers up into the rear trunk and ends up melting and deforming this so my suggestion uh, to you is in order to avoid this is to find some type of uh, heat shielding material and uh, line your trunk when you place this when you do place this in your trunk line your trunk with this heat uh, resistant material and uh, DEI sells a great little sheet that you can you know line your trunk in and, and uh, keep it from uh, heat exposure so Anyway, the other issue that you're going to come across when you do buy a power commander and it's used, um, you're not going to get the plug adapter that goes in here for the 9 volt battery. And it's basically uh, a plug that, <coughs> basically a 10 pin plug right here. And it plugs in and it's, it allows you to program or hook up a 9 volt battery and program it um, right here in front of your computer, right on your desk, and rather than on the bike. And uh, that makes things a little bit easier. Uh, to program instead of taking your laptop outside and using um, using your uh, the bike as a power source and connecting it via the USB input that's right here, which is kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see it right here. So the adapter piece that you that you may or may not have cost about twelve dollars and something in change uh, from DinoJet. Now, if you go on eBay, you're gonna find, you're gonna see that people are selling this way overpriced, and um, to avoid that high cost, you can simply create your own. That's what I've done right here. That's why you see these wired leads plugged into here. And once you create your own, you're, you'll be able to hook up a 9 volt battery uh, to this and power it on. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit for you. But uh, at any rate, uh, you're going to see these high priced gouging people selling it for $17, $18. I've seen it all the way up to almost $30 for a simple Molex connector with a battery snap on it. And uh, I think that's a total ripoff. <clears throat> you don't need that. Um, you can do it you can do it in this fashion and if we go ahead and take a look at the power commander <coughs> and we get started you can see that um, the pin connector or the, the bottom connector is right there so if you take a look at my wiring this is black this is red you just need to tap into these two points right here to put your power source on so and it's a nine it's nine volt source that you need so i'm going to be connecting this to a nine volt battery in a bit but uh, these leads you can actually pick up anywhere i got a pack of them here and i got them from fry's electronics 
and uh, I use them in my for little electronic projects that I have or when I'm working on the bike or whatnot. I'm just gonna simply snip off these little ends, expose the wires, and tap it to a battery and uh, power up this on my desk. So uh, these are to control your power commander on the fly, but uh, you won't really need to do this. Uh, once you program it, it's program and, and go. So <clears throat> other things that aren't explained on other videos is the actual leash and what you're gonna need. Now, <clears throat> I thought for some reason or another that this actually needed to connect to the bike in some fashion, but it actually doesn't. Okay, there's, there's no power source that you are gonna need for this. You're just gonna simply connect this up to ground which is a ground terminal and you're going to connect your injectors up right here now your conjecture your injectors are going to the bike is actually going to provide power to the power commander via the injector okay so this is where it's going to get its power source there's no other um, connecting to power or whatnot so this is it right here at the end of this one which i believe is number one or or number four cylinder you got this one little clip here and you're gonna actually have to uh, tap in t-tap into the um, TPS to gain its signal so this is what this one's for so how these connect up you simply unplug your injector plug in your injector into here plug this back into the bike or vice versa I haven't hooked it up yet so um, I still need to review the documentation and but I'll demonstrate that in a minute when I hook it up to the bike but uh, yeah you're just gonna simply plug in your injector into one of these things and then the other one I'm sorry plug in your harness into one of these things and plug that one into the um, into the fuel injector okay and like I said power is given to the to the power commander via the red cable all right, so what I got here in front of me is a basic USB adapter and kind of, kind of wanted to show you that. Now any USB adapter will work as long as you got a USB to the uh, micro USB because and this is the older style um, batter tip USB. Let's see if I can find that on the camera, there we go. So that's what you need to actually plug into the Power Commander uh, data import. So any one of these will do. You don't need a specific one. You can buy this anywhere, your local fries, eBay, what have you. So to connect up the power source to the Power Commander, you are going to need a 9 volt battery, like I said. And uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, make sure your 9 volt is good. There's a lot of uh, people on YouTube uh, saying that, oh, I plugged in my, my uh, power commander and it didn't power on and voila dead battery okay so i did the same thing I'm, I'm a fool i had a battery sitting around laying around for years and years and i plugged it up no power came on now when you plug it up you're going to get a little led flash right here as it zips through here and then it's going to stay solid and fall to the bottom of the power commander and stay on that lets you know that you have power to the unit well when you have a dead battery uh, the battery that I had only had 1.7 volts on it and wasn't 9 volts and of course it didn't power up so make sure you if if you have an issue once you plug it in and you, your power is going good to go and nothing lights up most likely it's a dead battery okay um, how I'm going to connect to all this I'm just going to use basic um, alli or alligator clips and connect onto the battery and connect onto my my leads that I have put in here so I just kind of want to point that out to you guys and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the website and show you how to download your maps for your application give me one second while I set that up okay guys so uh, here we are at the power commander website and or the DinoJet website and to get to here you can go to powercommander.com and uh, put in your year make and model now just as an fyi power commander 3 is obsolete it's been discontinued and uh but they do uh still offer all the maps and everything you need for the unit uh, on, on their website so given the fact that it is obsolete you still it is still supported by DinoJet. okay so to give you a little browsing tour um in case you need to purchase something and from the power commander website you would go to products and find what you need in here. Um, this is where you can actually buy replacement parts, as you can see down here in the bottom. And for the older units, um, 
what they have on here now is all related to Power Commander 5. So it's going to be kind of uh, uh, rough to find anything that uh, has to relate to uh, PC3. So here is the connector that I had showed you, uh, I was talking about previously. And as you can see, uh, let's go ahead and see if I can zoom in on that for you guys. This is the actual uh, nine volt adapter that you would need to purchase if you want to purchase it here. And as you can see, it's twelve dollars from the power uh, from the DinoJ website. So don't go buy it on eBay. You're gonna get ripped off by a few dollars or so, seventeen, eighteen dollars. Like I said, I've seen it all the way up to thirty. So if you want actually really want to have this device, you can purchase it from the DinoJ website for twelve dollars. And uh, but why do that when you can make it your own? It's just a simple molex connector that plugs in you are only going to need this uh during the time that you are going to actually program the device or make any changes or modifications to your maps okay so we'll go ahead and zoom out there so let's move on to here when it comes to your year making model okay um one thing i found out here there there is a difference between um, and you're going to find out once you come onto the website. When we select our make, we're going to say Suzuki or whatever bike you have. The model on the DinoJet website, they they differentiate, differentiate, however you say that word, um, the GSXR 750. Now you see right here we have GSXR dash, I'm sorry, GSX R 750. These are the earlier models of our motorcycle. So these are where we're between 1989 and up to some, you know, probably previous years before that. And uh, all the way up to, I think, 99 it is. Um, do not, if you have an older bike, then this is what you want. But they also have another one on here that is GSXR 750. Okay, so this is GSXR 750. This is for the newer model GSXR. Okay, so if you select this one up here, you are going to get the older years. So you do not want you do not want those if you have like an 04 or 05 GSXR that you want to buy. Here it is. So this one is GSX-R 750, and this one down here is GSX-R 750. So let's find that. There it is. G6 or 750. So there we go. You select that one and then you put in your year 05 or in my case 05. Now as you can see this is everything they have to offer for our bike and everything here relates to Power Commander 5. And as you can see right here the Power Commander 3 says discontinued no longer. But you can still get the maps. Okay so let's go down to here and Let's go ahead and retrieve our map, okay? All right, to retrieve your map, we need to go ahead and select maps. We're gonna put in our year making model, Suzuki. Scroll all the way down till we see, I'm at the very bottom here, until we see GSXR 750, not GSXR. I'm sorry, not GSX-R750. So this is the one you want, GSX-R750. Okay. Come over here, I have an 05, and select that. So again, it reminds you that we are no longer being supported under three. Now, what is the difference between uh, three and five? Well, the, you know, five is a newer version of it. It's smaller, um, thinner, we got rid of the buttons. Uh, it's got a lot more things to add to it, like a lot of external pieces, but uh, this is this one is California regulated, so um, it's uh, kind of a tuned down version of this. This lets you control everything, while this has uh, minimal control uh, specifications according to uh, California laws and, and what have you. So um, it's a watered down version of this. So uh, with this, we get full control. With this, we get semi full control. So let's go ahead and uh, select that one. So we now have our maps. And as you can see, you can over on the right hand side, we can go ahead and download whatever map we want. Now, um, for your specific application, 
Now I have a Yoshimura Bolton exhaust and I have an aftermarket air filter which is a K&N. Now if, we, if I zoom in closer here, scroll down, looking for my exact specifications, Yoshimura exhaust and stock or aftermarket air filter. And so you're gonna to wanna to hit download. You know, I've already downloaded this and I have it on my computer and I'm all ready to go. Uh, the map number here is uh, 317-007. So if, if you have this application, go ahead and download that map. If not, continue on looking for your specific application here uh, with, according to whatever exhaust you have and whatever uh, other thing you have going on here as far as uh, air filter. One thing I did want to mention, um, these maps, when they come, when you download them, they come as a download, as a zip file, and you're going to want to unzip it. So if you don't have an unzipper program, you're going to want to go ahead and go to uh, winzip.com and download a free uh, free application here, a uh, free winzip application, and download that so you can extract your file. Once you extract your file, I suggest you either put it on your desktop or somewhere available so that you can uh, have easy access to it. All right guys, so I went ahead and installed my Power Commander software. And uh, once you go ahead and install it, um, you will be brought, and you open it, you will be brought up to this page and it's gonna be blank. Now to give you a little speci uh, specifics on the application, this up here is going to be your throttle position. So when you roll back on the throttle, this is what we're giving. This is what we're telling the actual program or what to, this is what the, the program actually runs. So this is your throttle position and these are your RPMs. Uh, as you can see, we got 2, 5, 10. So this is 2, 5, 10, you know, 20 as you roll back on the throttle. And those are the RPMs on that side. So just to give you a little specifications over here, we can open up our map files and uh, here you can actually uh, save a map if you made some custom modifications to, um, to, your, uh, to your custom map. Let me go ahead and put that in view. So this is where you open up a map file. It's the one that you downloaded from <clears throat> the DinoJet website. And uh, hopefully you have it stored on your desktop somewhere where it's easy to get to. I have <clears throat> three, a three monitor setup, so I'll just be uh, doing it from uh, my desktop right here. Um, you can, like I said, if you make any modifications to the numbers that populate within this area, um, you can go ahead and save that custom map and to your computer and you can label it as whatever it is you want. Uh, how, we, how we send the uh, map over to the power commander we're just going to hit the send feature and uh, this is all I'm basically going to show you here within this video I mean you can you can read up on the DinoJet website to go any further than that but this is what you're basically going to need so um, right now we don't have anything displayed because I don't have the power commander set up or powered on so let's go ahead and move over to uh, connecting the power commander up All right guys, so as you can see, I have the power commander all set up minus the power. So again, you are going to plug in your USB type um, 2.0 or type um, is, I believe what they call it is a, a mini USB connector right here. And so it's USB 2.0 is what they're using for this. As you can see, I have my power connected up and my ground connected up and I have my battery over here connected to my alligator clips. So I'm gonna go ahead and power up the unit by adding ground. And as I connect it, you can go ahead and watch the power indicator right here, watch it flash. And we now have power to our unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, move over to the Power Commander um, program. Let me set the camera up for you on there. All right, guys, so we're back here at the application. And one thing I wanted to make mention, which just occurred to me right now, is that if when you power on your power commander, and you don't actually need power to do this, but if you don't see these 
green lights over here, that means your um, USB connector is not um, communicating with your computer. So if this doesn't light up over here, it all says, it doesn't say anything. Um, you try to get a map or whatnot, it doesn't work. It says you get a communication error down here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change out your USB connector, which I had to do myself. So um, just to let you know, FYI, if you don't get that green light over here, then chances are your USB cable is not compatible with the Power Commander unit. So um, I have this cable, I use it to use uh, charge my um, my HD Ghost, and uh, while it works for that device, it does not work or communicate with my Power Commander, so I had to swap it out. So just an FYI. So here we are at the Power Commander application. I'm gonna go ahead and add power to it once again. My power command, oh. and as I connect it up, you can see we instantly got some information on the right hand side. So, one thing I did want to mention, guys, that uh, because we don't see anything happening here, this is for live tuning. Now, once we connect this up to the bike and we have the bike running you are actually going to see uh, numbers running here now in order to do this again you are going to need a laptop or if you have your computer in your garage a long extension cable uh, USB cable to actually connect this while the bike is running and uh, when you do give it uh, some throttle you will see these numbers increase you will see your engine RPM increase and the fuel and duty cycle change so just an FYI, as we program it here and it's not actually connected to the bike, that these are all gonna stay the same. So just wanna kinda add that in there. If you bought this unit used, um, it, it's probably already pre-programmed with something else um, on it. Uh, so, or if you bought it brand new, then, which is kind of rare, but uh, since it's discontinued, but um, it's gonna have something already programmed into it. So let's go ahead and find out what is actually in it. We're gonna go over here and say, get map, and here we go. So now it's bringing up all the information that's currently on the Power Commander unit. And as you can see, we got our throttle position sensor right here information, and we got our engine RPMs and what fuel trims and air that it's giving throughout here. So. What we want to do is, if you want to go ahead and save this, you can. Um, if, you, if you need this information now, since I don't know what bike this actually came off of, this information is totally useless. It could, it could have very well came off of a Jigsaw, but I want to make sure that I program the right map. So um, this information is uh, useless to me at, at this time. So I don't need to save the map file. And so, if you want, you did want to save it. If you made some custom adjustments to your map, you can go ahead and do it by saving map file. So, let's go ahead and retrieve um, our downloaded uh, Power Commander file. And so, what did I do with that? So, I got my PC3 software right here. I'm going to move it to my second monitor so I can easily pull this up. Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a snapshot of this to make sure that it changes out um, since I don't know what the actual values are of, of the new map table. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of this and save it because I wanna ensure that my new map is put on there. So give me one second while I do that. So I'm gonna do an alt print screen since I have three monitors and I only want to put it on uh, one monitor or take a snapshot of one monitor. So there's my snapshot of the current settings on the Power Commander. Let's do page layout. I'm gonna go to orientation, I'm gonna go to landscape, and um, there we go. Maybe expand this out a little bit so I can see it better. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that to my second monitor.
Whoop. Let me bring this back over here real quick. All right, so let's take a look at this map. We can see everything that we have. And uh, I want to make sure that either these numbers change out. They, Like I said, they may or may not change out for the simple fact that this could be applicable or someone could have had a Jigsaw 2005 that they were using this Power Commander from. So um, now I got a good reference. If any of these numbers change, I know that um, that my new map is actually on the device. If they don't change, well then this was already programmed from, this could or could not be mean, mean that it was programmed, already programmed for an 05 Suzuki with the same specifications. So go ahead and move that over to my other screen. Now, let's open our map file. So I have my maps on my desktop, so I'm gonna click open map and I'm gonna come over here and select my uh, M3, M317-007 is what the map was, if you remember from previously. And it's asking me what I like to save this untitled one and before opening. So we'll say yes. And let's do this. Uh, I will say map. Map that came with PC3, and I'm going to save that to the folder where I had, where I have it, which is my PC3 software. I'm cool with that. Click save. Okay. So we're going to say open map file, and here is our new map. Now, when we go install our new map. As you can see down here, it says, uh, it gives you a brief uh, notes section right here and it tells you what application you are applying it for. So this right here says 2004 Suzuki GSX-R750 Yoshimura Bolton Muffler Stock or Aftermarket Air Filter. And this is what I have. So we know that we have the correct mapping here. So if I go ahead and do a comparison to the previous map that I have, we got uh, we got differences in fuel trims here. So let's see what we got here. What was previously? So if we look in the um, 2000 range, we look down at about 1500 RPMs. We see that 1500 RPMs we have four. They have a negative one. So this wasn't applicable to um, to our bike, and uh, obviously they were using it with different. Uh, was something different so just an FYI so let's go ahead and run down the rest of it so we got to four here we got to two here we got negative one negative one so yeah this is definitely for some other type of bike now looking at here this is um, our, in our in our RPM range 1250 is usually what we set our engine idle at and this is what we have for our engine idle it's all zeroed out and because uh, we're actually not giving a gas the bike is just running on its own so somewhere in the range of uh, 1500 rpms when we, when we apply a little bit of throttle here uh, our values change and this is what it's mapping out and as we increase the throttle you can see these numbers grow so grow or decrease depending on what application is for so uh, so let's go ahead and uh, send this map to um, our PC3. So now that we have our map in place, we know that it's for our Suzuki Jigsaw GSX-R750 04. We're gonna go ahead and send that map. Power Commander map sent successfully. Press OK. And there we have it. Our map is now programmed into our Power Commander 3. So, uh, just a little more information than what is actually found on on YouTube. I want to provide this for you guys. So, uh, in my next series, I'll be actually connecting the device up to the motorcycle and uh, showing you how installation goes. So, uh, 
yeah stick stay tuned for that and i hope you guys like this uh, tutorial uh hit the thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to uh, subscribe and uh, share and uh, if you can all do me a favor um go ahead and watch those um uh, those infomercials that's how uh, you know i receive a little bit of money for that on my youtube channel it helps out a great deal and uh, so if you can do me a favor stick with me uh, stick with through the infomercials that pop up don't skip next and uh, so you can help me out and and that's all i ask as always guys i will see you next problem and stay tuned for the next part of this video